Last time we were in Mammoth, I remember seeing people on bicycles flying down the big hill that takes you up to Lake Mary. It looked like so much fun, so on our last trip we loaded up the bike so we could do it too. From the Cinnamon Bear Inn to the free shuttle, it's only about 1.1 miles. The challenge is that it is all uphill and we were not acclimated to the elevation just yet. So needless to say, we had to take a couple breaks along the way. If you want to catch the shuttle, you will be making a right just after the Mammoth Brewing Company. You can also drive to the top and then have the shuttle take you back up to your car, but we figured that this way would just be easy because we could leave the Jeep at the hotel. If you decide to come up to do the Lakes Basin bike path, be sure that you get on the shuttle that is across the street from the mountain center. If you get on the shuttle on the other side of the street, you will be going to the bike park. Once aboard the shuttle, we began our climb up over a thousand feet to our destination. Along the way, we got to pass by several beautiful lakes and even got to see some horses. We also saw a small handful of people that were riding all the way up and then back down the mountain. Almost all of them were on e-bikes, but we did see a couple absolute lunatics doing it on regular bicycles. Soon we found ourselves at the trailhead where we got to grab our bikes off this really cool bicycle trailer. The parking lot at the top is pretty big. It might fill up on popular weekends, but there was a ton of parking when we were there. We wanted to maximize our ride this day, so we started off by doing the Horseshoe Lake Loop, which you can see in the last video. I won't go into too much detail, but this is a really nice beginner loop that is just over a mile long. We completed the entire loop before making an immediate U-turn to start the Lakes Basin bike path. One great thing about this trail is that if I had to guess, I would say that it's probably around 95% downhill. You definitely do not need to have any type of crazy endurance riding skills. Gravity is going to be taking care of almost all of the hard work for you. I would definitely suggest making sure that your brakes are in really good shape before you attempt this trail. There is a 15 mile an hour speed limit on this trail, so you're going to be riding your brakes pretty hard to keep yourself from going too fast. I'm not 100% sure if they actually enforce this speed limit, but we did come across a lot of hikers and other bicyclists on our way down the hill, so it's probably good to keep the speeds down for everyone's safety. I suggest leaving yourself a good amount of time for this ride. There are a lot of stops and photo ops along the way and it seemed like we never made it too far without pulling over to check something out. As we passed by Lake Mary, we did come to one of the very few uphill sections. Luckily it was pretty short and not that steep. Lake Mary is the largest of the Mammoth Lakes, so climbing this hill will give you a good chance to look over and check it out. The hill definitely seems to get a little bit steeper after you get past Lake Mary, and we were sure glad that we were going downhill. There aren't too many forks or ways that you can get lost on this bike path, but just in case you feel like you might be, there are some signs along the way to let you know that you're on the right path. About 1.8 miles into the ride, you will once again pass the horse stables, and you will be happy to know that it is pretty much completely downhill all the way to the bottom. Not too far from the horse corral comes our next viewpoint, and it is right on the other side of this bridge. If you cross the bridge, you will find yourself at a spot that is overlooking the valley. You will also get a view of this tunnel that is sometimes attempted by extreme backcountry skiers in the winter. I think I'm going to leave that one to the pros considering the fact that I can't even get off the ski lift without falling on my face. At this point in the ride, we were working our way down towards the shores of Twin Lakes. One of the benefits to leaving our car at the hotel is that we didn't have to worry about rushing to catch the trolley to go back up and get it. The trolley runs daily from 9am to 6pm, so if you leave your car at the top, be sure to leave enough time to catch the trolley to go back up and get it. If you miss the last one, you can always take a taxi to the top, but you might as well enjoy the free ride if you can get one. Just after we passed the Twin Lakes General Store, we were treated to a deer sighting. It was definitely a nice addition to the trip and it wasn't the only wildlife we saw because soon we ran into this puppy and V pretty much fell in love. We're pretty good at finding cute pups on our trips and it seems like we always run into at least one. At the fork after the general store you need to make a right if you want to stay on the trail. And I'm glad we did because that took us to our third and final adorable animal encounter of the day when we saw these baby ducks. Twin Lakes is a really neat spot and we cannot wait to come back here with our kayaks at some point. It's not a huge lake and I'm sure we could get from one side to the other pretty quickly, but it is really pretty. If you don't have your own kayaks or paddle boards, don't worry because they do rent them here if you want to check it out. The trail did seem to kind of fade away for a second when we got to Twin Lakes and we ended up just driving down the main road. At the end of this road, you do need to keep your eyes peeled because there is a quick right turn that you need to take if you want to stay on the trail. 
If you miss it, it's not really a big deal. You can always carefully cross over Lake Mary Road and you'll end up right back on the bike trail again. You are now at the beginning of the biggest hill on this bike path. But before we started on our way down, we wanted to head across to a viewpoint and get one last look at Twin Lakes. This is a super picturesque photo op and I definitely think it's worth a quick stop. It was pretty windy on the day that we went, but I would love to stop by here on a still day because I bet the reflections in the water would be really awesome. After enjoying the beautiful scenery for a little bit, it was time to finally take on the big hill. As much fun as it might be to just fly down this hill, you probably want to take your time here as well. Otherwise, you might miss the beautiful views of the waterfalls and the valley. For some reason, the first time that I saw the bikers coming down the hill, I thought that you just started at Twin Lakes. So finding out that the downhill section is over five miles long made this so much more fun. The whole experience was really cool and I would not even hesitate to do it again the next time that we're in Mammoth. I like the variety that this bike path had to offer. There's some tight windy sections, long straight downhills, and even a couple of tunnels. They all add up for a really fun day. As you start getting closer to town, you will start coming to crosswalks with stop signs. Be sure to stop because we did encounter traffic at several of them. Next thing you know, you'll be back at the Mammoth Brewing Company. If you enjoy our adventures, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified when we make new videos. Check us out on Instagram at thatadventurelife underscore official and for all the information about the lake space and bike path, as well as other awesome things to do in Mammoth, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.